are so excited to be producing It's a Wonderful Life Alive radio play. Our artistic leadership committee chose this show several months ago um, when we were looking at what we wanted to bring to Rena Little Theater's stage this season. What we really wanted were stories that could connect our community to one another. And um, in this case, It's a Wonderful Life is a story that is something that anytime we mention it, people talk about what they remember from the film and, and the holiday traditions they have with their families and all of those things. So we thought it would just be a nice way for our audiences to like have a little holiday cheer um, and connect with each other in that way and connect with themselves in that way. The other reason we really love this story is that it's about an individual's impact, like how much a single person does impact their community and impact the world. And I think that's something we need to be reminded of right now. So there's a million reasons why we chose this show. Um, the other reason is that we are in our 89th season and we're looking back at our history right now as we prep to go into our 90th year. And It's a Wonderful Life was produced in 1946, uh, the play, the film rather. And so believe it or not, RLT is actually a few years older than this. But we thought it was also a good chance for us to like look back at our history and think, oh my gosh, RLT was creating shows just like during this time period too. So it's really cool to have that opportunity as well. So this version of the show does take place with a live studio audience in a 1940s radio station. And what's challenging about that is that we are watching essentially five actors recreate a story. And on one hand, they're in a radio studio, so what you're really relying on is their voice. And that's what audiences at home would be hearing. But in person, it kind of gets a little stagnant if all you're looking at is people standing in front of a microphone. So the challenge there is how do you stage something like this and make it interesting for a live audience? And so we're looking at it as sort of a hybrid between a radio play and a live play. And the inclusion of the live studio audience is what really helps you know, set that tone. Um, we've got the applause signs and we've got, you know, we're hoping our audience will really be engaged in that. One of my favorite things about it though is that you get to see the actors transition from character to character where a radio audience would not see that transformation. And so what we're really focusing on with the cast is how do we differentiate those characters with our bodies and our voices. So it's like a really cool behind the scenes look at um, how voice actors might inhabit a character while also adding a theatrical flair. We're hoping to transport the audience to the world of It's a Wonderful Life in several ways. Um, one is with the use of a live Foley artist and our assistant director did a lot of work with her. They went into our props closet and found as many weird things as they possibly could to make all the different sounds. Like when George crashes through the ice, we're actually crashing ice in a bucket, you know, we've got um, slaps, you've got footsteps walking away, you've got doors slamming, bells ringing, and Marissa is actually back there with the help of the rest of the team making those things happen in real time and then our actors are responding to them. So it's really fun, it's a unique challenge for sure to get the timing right, to find the right thing that makes that sound because it's not just as simple as, you know, somebody has to be slapped so let's slap a guy with a microphone like it doesn't work like that so we have to get really creative which is very very fun um, another challenge is the sound of the 40s and the, and the feel of the 1940s radio play so we're using live microphones um, to kind of do that with some interesting filtering and things like that we've got um, music that's integrated into there and we're not quite finished with the, you know, the overall show yet, so we're still finding ways in rehearsal to add elements of magic and things that I think will be really exciting to bridge that gap between um, the reality of the radio studio and the show itself. 
The other thing I really like about this is that we're transporting our audiences not once, but twice. It's like a two for one. So you get a ticket to the show and you get transported to the 40s in this radio studio, but then hopefully we're transporting you again to the world of It's a Wonderful Life. So I actually came into this production a little bit later than normal. Um, I'm actually uh, part of a directing team on this show, and so I have to credit the team that was in place prior to me joining the show with setting a lot of the tone um, and setting a lot of the groundwork for how we're going to discover these characters. Um, what I'm really focusing on now is we know so many people know it's a wonderful life and it means so much to them. We cannot possibly recreate those performances to a T, nor would we want to. So we're having a lot of discussions about, you know, what the meaningful moments of the story are and what things we want to pay you know, tribute to while also allowing our cast and our crew to tell this story with their own talent and their own skills. So if you're looking to see a, an exact replica of It's a Wonderful Life, this is not that, but we will make sure that all the things you know and love from that story are told in a really authentic way. One of the other things that's really interesting about the show is that, again, the actors are playing so many characters. In one scene, uh, the actor who plays Clarence literally plays three characters in a scene with no other actors. <laughs> so he's just transitioning from Clarence to this guy, to this guy, to this guy. And seeing that live is really, really fun, but it's also such a unique challenge for our team. And that's one of the reasons why our artistic leadership committee chose this show too, was we really believe in the level of talent in our community. And this is a real unique storytelling uh, challenge for sure. There are three actors in the show who play 12 characters a piece, somewhere between 12 and 15 characters. And then you've got um, the two characters, the two actors who play Mary and George really only play Mary and George and the young versions of Mary and George. Um, but the other three actors play everybody. And then on top of that, they play the character of the actor that plays those characters. So this is like a Christmas inception. <laughs> it's really, it's really wild. So we had to spend a lot of time figuring out you know, who's your actor character? What What's their experience? What's their relationship to everybody else in the room? So you're not seeing Melody play Mary. You're seeing Melody play Sally, who's playing Mary. And it's really, it's really wild. This show is definitely one that anyone can come to. Um, I love that it's family friendly. I love that we're you know, producing this show during the holiday season, so it's just gonna be a great opportunity for people to kind of come out together and have a nice night. It is such an uplifting story, and I think that's our goal here is to, is to really give people just a night out that feels warm, that feels fun, that takes you back to a place that you, know, you feel connected to and feel happy remembering, hopefully. So I really think whether you've um, been to the theater before or not, this is a great one to come to. If you've been to RLT or not, this is a great one to come to because it's just really, really accessible, I think. And again, hopefully really fun.